hope you can uh, see me, hope you can uh, hear me. Uh, whether you're joining us here live in the room or whether you're joining us on our uh, YouTube live streaming, uh, you're very welcome to today's webinar. Great to see you uh, all uh, here. Um, as always, if you are joining us on the YouTube live streaming, then uh, by all means, be, you know, be sure to uh, subscribe to the uh, Admiral's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, if you're finding our videos uh, uh, helpful, great, please give us a thumbs up, we like, or even thumbs down if there's topics that you know don't really appeal to you. We, we appreciate all the feedback. And if you have thoughts about perhaps what you'd like to see us uh, cover in future webinars, by all means, put that in either the comment box on YouTube or in the, the chat box uh, here with us on uh, on Zoom today. Um, so uh, here for today's webinar, what we've done is uh, over the period of these webinars is we have on occasion looked at some, let's say, interesting and uh, fascinating traders uh, and investors and, you know, just sort of tried to look at, you know, how their career developed and, and what, if anything, that we could learn uh, in as we go about our own trading and investing endeavours. Uh, and today we're going to look at the uh, kind of fascinating career of uh, Dr. Michael Burry. I should give him the uh, the, the correct uh, the correct accord. Um, uh, and we're going to have a little chat about you know how his uh, career developed, you know what he's been involved in, and and what if anything we can learn and take away uh, going forward. So um, as I said, great to have you here. If you just bear with us a moment, we'll switch across to the charts, uh, and we'll actually uh, we'll look to begin. Thanks very much. Super, super. So I so hope you can uh, hear me, hope you can see me, hope you can see the slides. That uh, that will always make for a good start for the day, won't it? So uh, as I said, we're here to talk about the incredible career of uh, Michael Burry and, and what can we learn from him. Uh, and it would be fascinating for me to uh, to hear today, you know, uh, what, uh, if anything, you know about Michael Burry. Do you, are you aware of his background? Are you aware of his work? Do you actually follow, okay, his uh, either his uh, occasional social media uh, uh, comments or his actual sort of, you know, some of his uh, particular uh, investing styles? If you, uh, you know, if you do, if you know him, well then uh, by all means, please, it'd be great to hear what your own thoughts and ideas are, are on the general because he's it's quite a fascinating character you know an absolutely fascinating character and uh you know hopefully i'll be able to sort of impart and share that with you so it'll give you a little bit of you know a, a little bit of insight but also maybe a little bit of uh, motivation a little bit of inspiration to see what is uh, truly possible with uh, with a bit of uh, with a bit of hard work and uh, and endeavor um, uh, as always, I appreciate that we've got a uh, you know a wide range of people here joining us in the uh, in the room. I appreciate you know we have a we have a truly global audience as um, as well. So uh, as I say, you're always uh, very welcome. Um, great to see you uh, all here. If you have particular questions or thoughts or comments, by all means, give us a shout, and we'll be very happy to um, you know very happy to take that on board. And as I said, if you uh, have any uh, thoughts on uh, Mr. Uh, Burry style, then by all means, I'd uh, I'd love to I'd love to hear from. You. So um, for those of you joining us maybe for a first time, um, what you might uh, be noticing is that, uh, in fact, you know, Admiral Markets is uh, is now Admirals as part of the 20th anniversary. Admirals are going through a rebranding exercise. It won't actually sort of uh, have any uh, uh, complications in terms of how you look to uh, trade with Admirals. It's just uh, looking at the, the actual change in the particular branding so that you're uh, aware of what's going on. Uh, and you know, admirals are a uh, you know a global broker with uh, local support. Uh, you'll find that they are licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, and um, providing uh, competitive spreads on the most uh, popular trading products, uh, and allowing the opportunity to engage with markets using both uh, very popular MT4, MT5, uh, and also the Admirals Supreme Edition. If you've got any questions about admirals, please get in touch with your account representative, and they'll be very happy to help uh, guide you. Uh, and also you can, uh, in the modern age, you can also follow uh, Admirals on Instagram. So uh, if you're uh, on that uh, particular platform, by all means, give us a uh, give us a follow. You can see us there at Admirals Global. Uh, click in there, you'll find that uh, um, my assistant Anna and uh, the rest of the Admirals team will do a fantastic job of uh, keeping you up to date with uh, what's going on in the world through the, uh, through the, the medium of uh, Instagram and the other uh, social media channels. So, um, what are we going to talk about today? Well, not unsurprisingly, as we're here to talk about Michael Burry, we're going to, I'll start off by saying, well, actually, who is he? You know, I appreciate, as I said, we have a wide range of experience and people in the background, some people will know him, some people will be fascinated with him, some people you may never have heard of him at all and stuff. And that's fine because that's what we're here for in these uh, particular sessions is to tell you a little bit about who he is, talk a little bit about how his career developed, 
talk about what was his big break and you might say there was a couple and, and you know most importantly well you know what is he focused on 2021 okay what is uh, where is it what has got his uh, attention at the moment uh, and also you know what what can we learn from him okay you know as a, as mere mortals okay you know what can actually we learn from a from a, a trading and investing legend like mr probably because there always is okay there always is so you know we we talk about you know certainly i talk about in terms of when i work with uh, clients is that um, is that you know you have to develop your own particular style but part of that style is invariably melding elements that you will have learned from other individuals or the people or the or the particular sort of trading styles or phenomena so, you know and, and there is always something that you can learn from uh, from other traders and investors okay so it's a, it's always a great episode, a great experience to be able to sort of talk about them, take on board. You know, there might even just be one thing that you can just think about and, and take aboard, and that will help you move forward in your own journey as a as a trader and investor. And for those who don't know me, my name is Paul. I started trading many years ago. I've uh, traded for uh, funds and high net worth individuals. I, you know, primarily uh, my focus is tends to be on FX indices, commodities as my own personal sort of method. And I tend to be a trend trader for the longer term trades and a mean reversion and reversal trader for for intraday uh, trading. That's uh, that's my particular uh, that's my own particular style. As I said, we all uh, we all look to develop uh, um, to do that. So um, uh, Dieter says, uh, very familiar with Michael as a trading hero and social media figure. Curious how he transitioned from medicine to hedge fund manager. Um, great point. Great admirer of his achievements, having been in the same market and failed to achieve the same. Well, that's great. Thank you very much for that, Dieter. That's um, that's fantastic. That's super. It's great to hear that you, you know clearly you uh, you've learned a lot about him as uh, as uh, as well. You can you understand who he is, uh, and you know you can, as you said, that you know you're an admirer of his achievements, and they and they are considerable, as we will as we will touch upon in a moment. But uh, that's great. Thank you very much. For that detail really appreciate that so uh, you know as i said at the uh, as i said at the start really during these webinars uh, we have at times covered kind of interesting and celebrated traders and investors in an effort to expand our own knowledge and, and see what we can lean learn from their uh, behavior in the markets um, today we're going to take a look at uh, michael burry uh, who came to prominence during the last great financial crash although he had been operating beforehand uh, and who recently has made some rather interesting uh, calls which we will uh, touch upon later and we'll look at his career okay and see you know what what can we learn from this fabulous career that he um has had uh, and you know as i said we've, we've covered a few of these individuals and there will be others in the future and and, and if there are particular um, if there are, you know, let's say particular celebrated traders and investors that you would like us to take a look at, well then, please, you know, put it in the chat box, pop it in the uh, comment box if you're watching this on the uh, YouTube live. You know, we will always take that on board. We always do because, you know, myself and my colleagues, Marcus and Jens, we're always fascinated, okay, to, to learn about, you know, great traders and investors because there's always, even despite, you know, however long, you know, I've been operating in markets, there's always something you can learn. There's always something, even if it's just reaffirming kind of, you know, you know, principles that, you know, you, you know that you should always follow as well as just maybe learning one little nugget that just basically just helps you just moves you forward you know it's um people think that um people think that you know, after you've been trading for a while that basically everything is set in stone you never learn anything more whereas actually it's it's, it's quite the opposite ladies and gentlemen right this is uh, what you'll find is engaging with markets is is an exercise in, in in constant learning okay constant learning you know whilst your what's your methods may narrow down your ability to learn about markets about individuals about how markets work about the kind of mechanics of them okay about you know the process of following your own trading styles from developing your own personal sort of tr trading psychology and you know just your own personal sort of you know, personal way of uh, way of trading way of uh, being um it, you know the, there is never an any end to that okay? and, and if there's one thing i can tell you is that the, the, the moment you think you've got it correct, the moment you think you don't have to learn anything more, is uh, is, the, is the moment you're about to get uh, hit by that juggernaut. Okay, this is this is uh, an endeavour where you will always be learning, you know. And so it helps to be fascinated in people who've done well. And as I say, maybe there's just one little nugget that you can take away that will help you evolve to your next level as a as a trader. So, you know. Not unsurprisingly, for those of you who are new and maybe don't understand what we've got to talk about, well, who is he? Who, who is Michael Burry? So um, he was born in uh, June 19th, 1971. So, uh, you know, actually, probably next week, he'll be celebrating his, uh, what would that be, his 50th birthday. Uh, been quite an interesting 50 years. Grew up in San Jose, California. 
Uh, and this is one of the interesting elements is that at, at the age of two, uh, he lost one of his eyes to, to cancer. And so he has actually an artificial uh, eye. So, um, you know, you might notice that if you if you look particularly in his photos and maybe we'll touch upon that uh, later because you have to think about, well, you know, how does that change a person? What does that what does that do okay, to a person? How does that how does that make you uh, behave? But he, he did study economics. OK, uh, but focused primarily on uh, medicine. OK, at uh, UCA, uh, University of California, Los Angeles. Uh, and you know, became a medical doctor. Okay, that's that's what he left his uh, that's what he left college with as a, as a medical doctor, uh, and was actually working in neurology. But he didn't finish his residency. All right, but even to this day, he has kept an active license as a physician, uh, and that's an interesting point. Okay, and that's something that we will actually come back to a little bit later when we look at some of the some of the um, some of the elements that uh, you know, uh, Michael Borry is looking at, at the moment. So be sure to stay with us till the end, so we can actually look at a few of his particular interests at the moment uh, and what is of interest to us okay as, as let's say as you know as private traders okay doing our uh, doing our own thing is that um, whilst off duty okay from his studies and uh, his work okay his doctor he indulged in his main hobby all right and his main hobby was investing in financial markets all right so you know this is a this is a fantastic element that we can take away from is that you know his, his you know, although he studied economics at uh, university um it, some 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 harsh people might say that studying economics at a uh, university uh, is, is kind of the worst thing you could do to be a to be a trader right because you know economics and traders uh, you know they're kind of generally tend to be two different uh to two different types of animals um, <clears throat> but you know what it what the interesting thing is is that he doesn't have a finance background, you know. He he didn't work at uh, he didn't work at a bank, okay. He didn't you know he didn't work at another financial institution, okay. He basically you know he, it became his main hobby, right? Investing in financial markets, which he did in his downtime in his spare time. Uh, and I'm sure there's many of you watching it here today, live, or actually maybe watching this later on in demand, where actually you know your trading and investing is is once again your main hobby around your you know around your maybe your day job, okay. And that that day job is what helps you know you pay the bills and look after family, etc. But, you know, hopefully, you know, just listening to how, you know, how Michael Burry progressed might give you just a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of motivation, a little bit of recognition that, you know, that actually it is feasible. It can be done. OK, you know, it's actually actually, you know, there are there are people out there who have done that and there will be people there are people out there who are doing that today. And so, you know, that can, uh, you know, I think that can always give everybody just a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of a little bit of motivation to, to effectively just to, to keep working hard at the, at the things they love. So what actually happened was um, Burry, as I said, he didn't finish his residency. He, he actually left uh, med school to, to, to start his own hedge fund in the mid 90s. OK, so you know, hedge fund might have been a bit too, a little bit of a, uh, a bit too strong a word. But uh, effectively, what he was doing is he, he started to write a blog about his trading ideas. And we're, and we're going to come on to what his actual style and concepts are in a few slides time. Um, he also basically contributed to, with uh, stock picks to a, to a major stock discussion site, which was known as Silicon Investor back in the 90s. Uh, and he was so successful at that, that he attracted interest from major institutions. So he didn't work for major institutions, but institutions, I think there was like play, places like Vanguard, et cetera, you know, huge big financial institution, started to take an interest in him because effectively he was doing, he, doing his own work, doing his own research, okay? Posting these stock picks to uh, the, you know, these uh, to his own blog, to his own stock, to, onto other like forums and stock sites, uh, and invariably they were being picked up, and they did well, and that that attracted you know interest to him. And it's uh, you know it's a, a little side segue is that you know when I talk to to traders who let's say are private traders and are talking about capitalization in terms of you know how they capitalize their own sort of you know trading uh, trading business you know i always say that you know just just focus on doing focus on doing the right things focus on being a good trader okay because if you focus on being a good trader you focus on you know how, following your processes being disciplined self-awareness keeping good records then what you'll find in the modern age is that opportunities will come to you okay opportunities will come to you. your job is to be a good trader so uh, after that, during the uh, the 90s, in, in late 2000, I think it was about November 2000, he, he did actually start his own proper hedge fund, which was known as Scion Capital. Okay, Scion is a, is a name from a, I think it's a book um, that he was a particularly, uh, it was a, a book of, a favourite book of his. Um, and that initial start, okay, uh, was basically funded by inheritance and also some loans from his family. So 
you know, he started a, you know, his own hedge fund in 2000, 20, just over 20 years ago. But, you know, as I said, you know, the, the funding from that came from inheritance family loads. You know, he, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't, uh, you know, he didn't start out being backed by an institution. You know, he didn't work for an institution, etc. You know, he, it's, he's pretty much, you know, did it all his own way, uh, all off his own back. OK, and that's um, that's, you know, that's undoubtedly a uh, that's undoubtedly something that we can all take, uh, you know, take a, an element from. And, uh, you know, and, and we'll touch on about how, you know, he started to, 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 to do well. But, the, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, it was just, you know, a, 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 just working simple, diligently, consistently day after day at his craft and you know what was he turned his hobby into his basically into his main business into his living okay into his life and, you know and that that is something that we can all take um, we can all take some inspiration from so Cyan Capital had had a had a real extraordinary start to its uh, to its life. Uh, in his first full year, the the S and P was down nearly twelve percent. Okay, so it was around about the time of the dot com crash. I remember it well, as it says that the S P was down nearly twelve percent. Cyan Capital was up fifty five percent. Okay, during a really kind of if any of you sort of remember trading through kind of like 2000, 2001, you know where it was actually pretty uh, pretty miserable for Cyan Capital to be up fifty five percent in this kind of first odd year of operating. You know that was you know an excellent astounding work okay and, and what he did was you know he achieved that by shorting overvalued tech stocks at the peak of the internet bubble all right which was um, a fantastic call all right you know really uh, you know excellent endeavor and you can see by yourself the numbers themselves backed up you know backed up his his you know his his thesis his concept of that effectively the, those those tech stocks were particularly overvalued and, and ready for a fall and uh if any of you can, if any of you remember that uh, period of time, any of you uh, old enough to remember that, um, you know that was that was quite some collapse that we saw there. Uh, and the thing is, you know, it wasn't just a one-off, okay? Because there the have been, you'll find, you'll find sometimes when they talk about celebrated traders, is that you know sometimes. Uh, sometimes these, you know, these traders and investors, they could be a bit of a one-hit wonder. All right, they were in the right place at the right time. They had a great year, you know, a fair play to them. Uh, but then actually, their, their their trading performance just tails off because actually they, you know, they weren't, they weren't, they weren't really, they weren't really that great. They they were just in the right place at the right time. Okay, and you know, fair play to them. You know, lady luck, lady luck. You know, you know, sort of shine down upon them. Okay, and uh, you know, when that happens, thanks very much. But what happens is that you realise, as I said is that they might have a, a one year one hit wonder but then actually the rest of the career you know is, is, is pretty stagnant this was not the case with michael burry okay so for those kind of first sort of like three four years you know he was he was clocking up great returns okay year after year after year and those of you can remember you know 2000 2001 2002 2003 you know you know they were they were tough years okay because not only did we have the uh, we had the the sort of the internet bubble crash uh, we also had effect you know 9 11 and the impact of that as well so you know there were uh, there were uh, there were a, a volatile couple of years shall we say okay and so for him to develop and deliver great performance in those kind of let's say those volatile times you know is you know was a sign that this that you know that michael was a bit special again okay, that he had a you know that he you know he had uh, he had great talent and as it says there by 2004 okay he was managing 600 million dollars all right and he was turning investors away all right and that's uh that is quite some um, that's quite some leap that's quite some you know over a few years to basically go from you know from effectively um investing in stocks as, as a hobby in your downtime from your job as a or you know your residency as a as a as a doctor to basically managing 600 million dollars so less than 10 years later is you know i'm sure you know agree that that's a quite an impressive that's quite an impressive move from from the gentleman so you know I, i'm sure you're all kind of probably interested to understand well you know how, how did he do that you know, how did he go from that kind of almost standing start to, to actually being in such a place that he was you know what's his investing style and and, and i would I, you know he's an investor more so than a than a trader you know that some of the things he does might be a bit you'd look at as like trades but his you know his general thing is in investing style and his, his main focus his main focus is still okay. Some people might disagree, but his main focus still is on value investing. All right, and, and what is that? Well, uh, well, my friend Jens, okay, my colleague Jens could explain it all the afternoon. He'd be fantastic to sit and explain this. Okay, he's he's exceptionally good at this kind of uh, stuff. But you know, is a is a simple understanding for people who are completely new to financial markets. Value investing is about buying stocks that appear underpriced by some form of fundamental uh, analysis. Okay, that's that is what they uh, that would be. And uh, and absolutely, as Vincenzo, as Vincenzo says, you know that uh, value investing equals Warren Buffett. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He is a uh, proponent of value investing uh, and and in the same way as warren buffett 
uh, Michael Burry, okay, his style is built upon a, a gentleman called Benjamin Graham, okay, and, and David Dodds. They wrote a book in 1934 called The Security Analysis. Uh, Benjamin Graham later on, I think about 20 odd years later, wrote a book called The Intelligent Investor, and it was all about effectively fundamental analysis uh, and invariably value investing, okay? I mean, just looking to buy, uh, you know, assets that would appear underpriced, okay? So they're looking for things like trading at discount to their tangible book value, um, those are assets, those stocks that have high dividend yields, or they have low price to earning multiples, or they would have a low price to book ratios. And this discount to market price is what they would call the margin of safety. And that, and, and Benjamin Graham talks about it, Buffett talks about it, Michael Burry has talked about it, that the margin of safety, okay, if you're buying, if you're buying a, let's say a tangible asset at, at a, you know, at a, at a severe discount, you have a, a margin of safety, therefore, once the market starts to, market starts to, to, to reassess the value of that particular, that particular company, and therefore those, those particular shares and it is in that okay as, as the uh, as the market sort of uh, um, uh, comes back to realize the kind of you know the, how discounted in value that particular stock is you know and the stock price rises that's that is where the uh, that's where the gravy is for for those of you in value investing so uh, as Vincenzo said it's uh, yeah you know it is the Benjamin Graham you know uh, Warren Buffett is a uh, is a, is a disciple of his as is Michael Burry okay and they've both done very very well out of it so you know it's not understandable that um, that you know that might be there might be something in there ladies and gentlemen if you haven't read Benjamin Graham's book The Intelligent Investor maybe perhaps you might want to if 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 value investing might be something that is of uh, interest to you and as if you operate as an investor as a to a particular trader but you know this has this has you know this is this was the cornerstone of michael burry's work michael burry's book is that you know you know he is looking for you know assets that appear underpriced but but equally equally you know he would also look for assets that are completely overpriced as well all right completely overpriced and might be looking for a reversion to a mean okay something we can talk about a little bit later it, some people might say that recently he he might look as if he's a bit more of a momentum uh, investor. It, it, you know, I think you could you could all of that is is up for debate, and all of that is actually you could you could quite happily sort of discuss for the uh, for the entire afternoon. But with regards to to regards for us today, and regards for what he's achieved and how he's looked, basically value investing has been the cornerstone of his way of uh, engaging with markets. So. <clears throat> You know, uh, let's talk a little bit about the rise of Sion Capital. Okay, we saw that you know we've had a, you know the first few years were fantastic, but here's where you know he started to make his big break. This is where people know him from now. Okay, this is where people you know his his legend was born, should we say? Because from about 2005, Burry started to focus on the subprime market. Okay, and he predicted a real estate bubble which, which would collapse in around about 2007. That's what it is. And in doing so, he pers he persuaded uh, Goldman Sachs uh, and other you know sort of tier one banks to, to sell him what were known as CDS credit default swaps against those subprime deals. Okay, um, subprime market you know effectively is uh, um, sort of you know providing mortgages to to let's say uh, people with you know less than less than ideal credit scores, and then invariably all those mortgages were were packaged up okay into into bonds effectively, and they were, they were sold as basically what was be seen as like what we call like triple a bonds as being you know absolutely you know superb bonds but actually they weren't they weren't anything at all and actually once interest rates started to rise those people on subprime mortgages would not be able to sort of continue their payments so invariably they would default on their mortgages those mortgages would default those bonds would default okay and invariably this is what by burry was actually talking about and effectively he was basically selling credit default swaps okay the kind of insurance against those okay but um, uh, the, the the challenge with that was that you know he suffered quite a difficult period because of credit default swap you have to you effectively as any kind of swap you're having to to pay the difference so to speak so for a few years okay he was actually paying the difference on those swaps until the market collapsed okay uh, and invariably it was a uh, it was quite a, a troublesome quite a difficult uh, time because and I suppose it's it's something you could say that you know that um, uh, that is true of all markets markets over overreact and underreact okay so you know trying to put a timeline on by when a market will collapse is uh, you know is is a, is a tough is a tough call because as I said markets can always overreact and underreact on a particular element but you know he suffered a particular you know troublesome that was a difficulty a difficulty with his investors because of it lots of his investors actually wanted you know wanted their remittance you know they wanted their, their cash out a bit 
But actually, as we, we all know now, that you know the, the subprime market you know, did collapse again. Okay, it brought down you know not only the kind of real estate, but, but you know across all asset classes across the world. You know, he made, you know, as it says that he made his investors 700 million, okay, 700 million dollars, all right, along with 100 million dollars for himself. So that's not a bad few uh, days in the offices. That's not a bad day's work. And, and what it actually looked is, you know, it says there between November 2000 and June 2008, Scion generated 489, just under 490%. In returns, okay, which you know is stunning returns, okay, but he actually he also closed sign on two thousand and eight, uh, and a lot of that was just due to the fact that you know he a you know he's superb, a fantastic you know it's fantastic trade, it's fantastic deal, but equally also the kind of the the pain from managing clients, okay, was uh, was was far too much for him, uh, and if you want to read more about that, well then invariably you know you can read you know the, there was a fantastic book read about, in fact it's it's about the whole collapse of that financial market, the great financial crash, uh, but of course. Michael Burry's in that he's in that and so the, the the book is called The Big Short which of course was then turned into a film the, the actor there as you can see there Christian Bale um, was the uh, was the gentleman playing uh, playing Michael Burry uh, you know my suggestion is if you haven't watched it you should go away and watch it okay if you're engaged in financial markets even if you have watched it after today maybe go back and watch it again because perhaps you'll look at that film through different eyes having sort of learned and understood a little bit more about mr michael burry and his uh and his fantastic career but as i said he closed sign down in 2008 having had you know having eventually just created this you know absolutely stunning return for his uh for his investors and his clients and himself but you know, it was not uh, you know, it was not the end. Okay, it was not the uh, it was the, not the end of uh, Mr. Mike Burry. He didn't go away and sort of you know um, put his feet up, sit about on his hundred million dollar um, uh, sort of uh, profits from the trades. It, he he basically came back. Okay, and and he he reopened uh, his hedge fund in 2013. It's now called Scion Asset Management, and in, and in, it, to begin with, okay, to begin with, he particularly focused on three asset classes water gold and land and if you watch the movie the big short you know the last kind of like the last little piece of the movie where they're telling about you know what the what the characters in the movie have gone on to you know they they talk about mr michael burry and about his you know his his focus on water okay and, and that's something he's particularly keen on uh you know and the question is you know would you would you bet against him ladies and gentlemen that's the question you have to ask yourself so you know um so you know he, he focused on those three asset classes water gold and land but if you if you look at his holdings OK, you'll notice there's actually been a lot of tech in the last few years. All right. And, and we as uh, as we as, you know, as, as mere mortals, we get to get a glimpse into his ideas through his 13F filings. OK, so what is that? Well, we touched upon it a, a couple of weeks ago when we looked at uh, what happened at uh, Archegos Capital okay, and how that collapsed and how they didn't really do 13F files because they were deemed to be a family office. But 13F filing is a filing required by the US SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, so if you are running a fund that is, uh, I believe it's over $100 million in position, well then every quarter you effectively, you have to uh, file what your positions are, okay? Uh, and this gives you a fantastic insight, okay, into, into how Michael sees the world, okay? What his particular view is, where he believes, you know, where he believes there is an opportunity for you know uh, undervalued assets to rise and what we have seen is that you know there's actually been a lot of tech in the last few years i'm going to look at that in a in a moment but you know you you can find that data you can just go onto the internet and google for that okay just you know google for michael burry's 13 f filing so you can have a look at what his latest ones and you can actually see what the ones over the last few years so you can actually see what he's been involved in and, and that in itself as i said gives you a fascinating insight into into his mind what he's looking at where he's focused at and also about you know what if anything you can learn from it or what you can take away from it yourself <clears throat> so you know one of the things he has come around is you know he's he's uh, he is a uh, how should we put it you know, he's he's a uh, he's an irregular he's an irregular um commenter on uh, on social media but you know he will occasionally uh, one of his recent ones is that you know he's he's effectively turns out that from his 13f um, filings is that you know he initiated a, a short position in tesla okay around december of last year and and this is you know this is almost like a, this is like a clash of the titans between michael burry and elon musk right he, he predicts tesla stock will collapse like the housing bubble uh, and as of may 2021 let's report that burry holds over about 800,000 shares in tesla so the question for you ladies and gentlemen something to contemplate 
who would you, uh, who, who would, you know, who would you back with your money? Who would you bet against? Okay, Michael Burry or Elon Musk? All right, which one do you think is uh, is more likely to be the uh, to be the winner in that particular in, the, in that particular contest? It's kind of interesting because you know Elon Musk has been, um, uh, let's say, you know, he's he's, uh, he's he's ubiquitous on social media in terms of you know you can find him everywhere. He's even hosting you know Saturday Night Live comedy shows, etc. He is uh, you know he's uh, never off the, the front pages of the paper. You might say in one way or another. Uh, Whereas uh, Michael Burry is, you know, Mike Burry is a uh, is just an investor. He, you know, he puts his money where his mouth is, you know, and just gets on the job. But has a uh, a quite a fascinating track record there. So the question becomes, you know, who would you uh, who would you back? And my uh, wonderful assistant Anna there, as uh, as you know, uh, as if as if by magic, um, has just put up a little poll there. Okay, so who would you choose, Michael Burry or Elon Musk? So whilst you're here, ladies and gentlemen, give that little give that little ping. Okay, and we'll uh, we'll have a look at that. All right. So uh, the uh, um, the 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 let's say the the early numbers are the early numbers are all supporting Michael. Okay. <coughs> Numbers are all their support, Michael. So, um, and Vincenzo said, "I would bet my money on Michael Burry." To be honest, and and, and there you go. You know that, that I, I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily fight against you. Okay, I wouldn't necessarily fight against you on that, Vincenzo. Okay, and I appreciate you you giving us your uh, your thoughts and insight. Okay, but you know this this is you know the, this is you know fascinating, isn't it? This is the, you know you are as I said getting a little bit of a clash of the titans. Okay, you know Elon Musk on one side. Okay, sort of just <clears throat> being the the showman, shall we say? Okay. Uh, whereas uh, Michael Burry is, is 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 quite the opposite, okay, you know, quite the opposite. Doesn't particularly doesn't particularly you know uh, look for attention or what have you. Just you know goes about his uh, goes about his business, okay. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's fascinating. And if we uh, have a quick look at you know here's a chart of Tesla. Let's let me just move this out of the way so we can have a little. So this is a weekly chart of Tesla. Let's bring up the old drawing tool here, okay? Uh, and you know, you can see here in 2019, um, in 2019 we had a bit of a, it was actually kind of a bit of a range and then bosh, off we went. And you can see that as we came into 2020, raced up, we had the COVID collapse, we raced back up again, then there was a um, uh, share splits uh, and effectively we start back here in the sort of summer. And, you know, we look at here and, you know, this is this is getting into December, okay? And which is when, which is when, you know, by their filings is that you know Michael Burry started uh, you know um, uh, basically buying puts okay he effectively options positions okay but effectively short position there uh, and, and what we can see is you know where we're trading now okay we're trading around about that six hundred dollar you know from what being up around about nine hundred dollars it's you know it's, it's lost there about a third now interestingly you know uh, you know it, it is you know it has the share price dropped has the share price dropped because of uh, what's going on in Tesla has the share price dropped because of what Mr Michael Burry's done and has the share price dropped because of uh, Elon's uh, Elon's comments about Bitcoin because um, what we saw here if we just uh, you know this is uh, this candle here okay on the weekly chart that is uh, that's what's known as a, a key reversal candle price pushes to a new high okay but rolls over and closes beneath the low of the previous candle if you look at it on a daily chart, that actually become a, became a bit of a head and shoulders pattern. It's a you know, big reversal pattern, and then price collapsed all the way back down to the sort of 50 period moving average here, as we can see. And now it's just sat around about 600. It's been making been making lower highs, okay, to do that. So, you know, uh, you know, which of those was it? You know, it could be all three, all right. But um, interestingly, if, if, as I say, Mr. Uh, Burry was uh, um, putting on his uh, position, as I said in December 2000, he's probably, he's probably in the money at the, uh, he's probably in the money at the moment. Um, whereas uh, I think Mr. Musk, because of the, uh, the comments about Bitcoin, I think he's lost something. I think someone said he's, he's you know, he's lost, Tesla's lost, you know, uh, over like a hundred billion in its uh, in its uh, its market cap. Okay, maybe be more than that. So that so, as I said, we're going to see how that plays out. Okay, well that'll be an interesting one to see to plays out. Who who basically uh, who's on the right side there? Okay, and uh, uh, that will be something. As I say, if you're not already watching Tesla, I I personally don't really trade at Tesla myself, and um, but I know you know I watch it for my own clients and stuff, and it'll be fascinating to see how that plays out over the uh, uh, over the over the rest of the year. I would suggest. He's, um, you know, so you know, what's he up to this at the moment, then, Michael? Well, he's been very, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's also been very uh, highly critical of the COVID nineteen pandemic lockdowns. Okay, he's uh, had a, a, a sort of an impact on that. He's had his own say. There's a, there's a quote I read here there from the other day: If COVID nineteen testing were universal, the fatality rate would be less than 002 percent. This is no justification for sweeping government policies lacking any and all nuance that destroy the lives, jobs and businesses of the other 
0.8 percent so what do you think ladies and gentlemen is you know is he right on that okay do you know would you uh, would you trust his judgment on that okay you know um, you know as i said he still keeps his you know he still keeps his uh, medical doctor's uh, license okay in uh, in california he's clearly you know still operating as a as a as a fund trader okay he's uh he's that and uh vincenzo says he's absolutely right and uh you know i wouldn't uh, once again i wouldn't necessarily disagree with you there vincenzo okay but you know he's you know he he's gone against the grain here okay when the conventional wisdom is is you know is that lockdown has been great for everybody you know he is he's going against it and you know it's a it's another element of you know him being quite happy quite happy to go against the grain quite happy to 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 you know to basically do his own research and follow his own path more so than just chasing the crowd okay and and, and that's something that you know, to, to take on board and consider um he's uh you know he's he's having an interesting 2021 because uh, he's also uh involved in the uh we had a you know a play in the, sort of the the GameStop shenanigans that we saw right at the start of 2021 where we saw those kind of uh, uh, wall street bets okay uh, and the reddit traders and the uh, uh robin hood uh, brokerage the the challenges they had there were actually basically you know um people trying to basically uh, they they overwhelmed and and uh, damaged damaged um uh, damaged you know hedge funds and uh, banks okay and people who had been short in GameStop and, and AMC what is uh, what was not very well known at the uh, the, the time uh, you know at the time is that uh, is that uh, is that what we'd see is that effectively um, uh, Michael Burry was already long in GameStop he'd, he'd acquired 1.7 million shares at an average price of ten dollars so he had about 17 million dollar uh, position in it at ten dollars and um, for those of you who remember and we, we covered this a few weeks ago uh, you know, the, the price ran up to I think it was just just under a shade under five hundred dollars, um, you know. So that was quite a, that's quite some moving. You have to ask the question, you know, was that just luck or, or was that Michael working his uh, magic again? Remember, you know, he's a value investor. He's he's going into finding you know um, to assets that are you know desperately undervalued because he you know he believes that actually as the the market reevaluates that and price rises, that is where his profit will come from. So. You know, he's he's you know he had his things there. He put out a couple of tweets about that about people because he thought it was actually madness what was going on, and he was actually trying to sort of you know uh, advise people to just basically you know be be careful you know with that. And you can see from your chart there how mad uh, you know the GameStop uh, price has been over the last uh, over the last few months. Okay, it's been a real quite roller coaster ride. Now you know we're up there trading around two hundred fifty dollars. Um, We'll see, you know, how uh, how many of his positions does Michael have, but even still, you know, that is a, that's once again that would be a yeah, that would be a very nice uh, very nice trade either way. Okay, the term that he's been involved with. So, um, yeah, fair play to you. Well done, Mr. Burry. There, he's he's, he's uh, done a grand job once again. <clears throat> but um, what I thought I'd finish off with, something that you can look at and take away, is that you know, uh, is that as I said, you, you know, he's he recently had to uh, file his uh, 2021 Q1 13F filings. Okay, uh, his positions were focused mostly on three industries. We, we've talked about you know um, some of the tech elements, but uh, healthcare, energy, and transport. Uh, and so I just thought I'd bring up a couple of slides with a couple of charts, them something that you can take away and look at. Um, first one here was uh, I think this is yeah this is uh, Marinus uh, Pharmaceutical. Pharmaceuticals, okay. So um, uh, they, I, I don't claim to be, uh, you know, I don't claim to be an expert in these particular uh, stocks myself. You know, I'm an FX trader, but just looking at it, you know, they're, they're a pharmaceutical company um, that develop and commercialise therapeutics uh, to sort of treat rare seizures disorders, so stuff like epilepsy and uh, forms of uh, depression. Uh, and that's a weekly chart we have there in front, and you can see that it's it's just grinding its way north, having had a you know pretty pretty big high there back uh, a few years ago. It fell away. Okay. Okay, you know, became undiscounted in value, and invariably now you can see that it is just grinding its way uh, up there at the moment. Okay, so he has a he has a position in uh, in those. Um, the, the next one is uh, is called uh, Zymeworks. I'm not sure if I pronounced that entirely correctly, but uh, Zymeworks, which is another uh, biopharmaceutical company. Um, that basically uh, discovers, develops therapeutics for for cancer treatments. Okay, uh, and it's kind of interesting here for me is that you know is that you know they had a, a high there where we fell away from, uh, and then really what we're looking at is I see that as a little bit of a, a double bottom there, and, and prices just starting to prices just starting to creep up there again, and so that might be that might be an interesting opportunity to to, to watch to see how that particularly plays um, plays out uh, over the uh, over the next uh, a couple of months. I'd uh, I'd be saying. 
Um, so, you know, uh, you know, he's, he's got, a, as I said, there's a few pharmaceutical companies. There. I'm just looking at a couple of them there, um, you know, but you have to ask the question, you know, he continues to maintain his uh, his doctor's license. Would he be a good person to, to follow in terms of, you know, uh, investing in healthcare? You know, he would have, a, you know, an understanding, certainly better understanding than I would have. And I've always felt that if you are going to invest in stock shares, it's, you know, it's better to invest in, in, a, in an industry or areas that you actually particularly either know or you utilize because you're more likely to understand that company. And so, you know, he has quite a, as I said, quite a, quite a few uh, positions in pharmaceutical companies. And, and so I would, you know, personally, you know, I would, I would, you know, I would trust his judgment. You know, I would trust his judgment on that. But um, as I said, other elements he's looking at is uh, is energy. Okay, and this is um, uh, this is Occidental. Okay, Occidental Petroleum. They're an interesting company. Okay, so um, they uh, they're effectively you know sort of owners and runners of uh, oil and gas properties in um, U.S., Middle East, uh, Africa, Latin America. Um, and this is interesting for me as I did a little bit of study beforehand. Is that um, is the, the company's cash flow changes quite considerably okay um it it, it actually it, the company's cash flow increases by 250 million dollars for every one dollar change in the oil price okay which is fascinating really what to me is fascinating so whenever oil is above 60 dollars okay it generates lots of free cash for occidental petroleum which is fascinating when you know, price has been trading above 60 for the last uh, for the last uh, few months in fact really hasn't it you know, it's been, we've been tickling the soft underbelly of 70 dollars and we look at oxy uh, itself the actual share price of the company well you know having had a really nice high there okay you know we can see that we were in a pretty strong downtrend we actually gapped down here okay to the into the start of the year and then we put in you know what you might call it you know some people might call that a very uh, clumsy double bottom some people might actually wish to call that a bit of a a, a cup and handle that is forming but you know it filled the gap and and here we are and we're just getting back there above the gap so actually something might be interesting to watch in here okay there's a that you would normally get a very good trend line okay My, i have not drawn one there you i apologize for that i as i say every week i'm a better trader than i am an artist so i apologize for that but you get the understanding you get the gist of what we're at what we're particularly looking at um what we're looking at there okay so that might be one to take a you know to take a little bit of a, a little bit of a look at a bit of uh, to see how that develops as well um, and he also had transports okay so uh, here's one that i think probably we've all missed the boat on in, in some respects uh, so this is a uh, golden ocean okay um big dry bulk vessels all right they uh, transport bulk commodities all right so ores coal coal um grain uh, uh fertilizers etc uh, and they've got i think about just under 100 ships okay in their fleet uh, if you remember what we talked about here a few months ago, about two months ago, I did a piece on, you know, the commodities boom. All right. So, well, if there is a commodities boom, you know, you need ships to to, 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 to move it about. So invariably that looks good for um, that looks good for, you know, transport companies. And that's what we've seen here, you know, having had a having had a bit of a, uh, a downtrend for a few years. Um, once again, we put in this kind of nice double bottom here, went sideways, and you can see for yourself that's that's been the boom there. So, um, you know, well, well done, well done, Dr. Burry. You know, that's um, that's fine work. I, I would suggest that you know the, uh, the 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 sort of you know the 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 kind of easy money has been made there in that particular position. But nonetheless, it's something that we can still you know you can still admire. So look, everybody traders like to look at a good chart. That's a that is a lovely chart. You know, if you were uh, if you were uh, long on it, well, and if you were well done to you. Well done to you indeed. And uh, what other ones did we put in here? Oh, we had uh, Scorpio tankers. Okay, Scorpio tankers. So um, here we go. So I actually had to make a note on this because I had I wasn't aware of these, but apparently Scorpio tankers uh, they're like a kind of poster child for uh, tanker stocks. Um, I did not realize that they are the world's most extensive tanker fleet, and they also have the youngest tanker fleet. There are tankers of about an average of about five years old, and what that means is that they can effectively um, they're able to to to, to, to process, or, you know, unload, offload, and transport commodities faster than uh, older you know companies with older ships, older ships and fleets, and so invariably that looks good for um, for them. So they're a kind of a kind of a clearly doing well and you know once again on a weekly chart here having had you know having had those prices drop 
Well, <clears throat> I would say, you know, we're, we're personally, we're looking at, you know, there's, an, as I said, a bit of a cup and a handle formation there, okay, that's been created there, okay. You know, there was clearly that sort of, you know, kind of lows around that area, which dipped beneath, uh, come back above. And, and now you'd be looking to see, well, is that going to actually sort of, you know, move its way forward? Is that likely to, you know, put itself in a position where it could actually um, generate and, uh, and and rise from there, okay. So, um, yeah, you know, that's, uh, you know, and as I said earlier, because the commodities boom, there's something that that, that is filtering out to transport companies. Uh, and uh, kind of think the final one there is uh, uh, Genco, which um, is a little bit like uh, Golden Ocean, okay? It's, it's another sort of um, uh, dry bulk vessel company, okay? Transportation, okay? Shipping fleets, being able to uh, ship uh, commodities, okay, around the world at a time when we are having a commodities boom. Uh, and not unlike a couple of those others, you know, having seen a bit of a, uh, you know, a collapse in the price, we put in a very nice uh, double bottom, all right? The, uh, we had, it was, it was around about seven and a half, eight dollars, double bottom beneath it. And then, you know, we had, I might say that there's a bit of an ascending triangle there uh, and price has just, price has just pulled up there. Price has pulled up there nicely. I'd be saying that for the last month or so, it's been a little bit um, going sideways. It's in a block and now you'd be looking to, well, where is it going to go um, from here? So, you know, as I said, there's a few of the, the stocks that he has positions in at the moment. I said, you can find that out yourself. You can just follow, you know, his 13 F fines to see where, you know, how, how you know, <clears throat> what his positions are, how big they are, what kind of size they are compared to the relative to the rest of his particular hedge fund. But as I said, you know, they might all be good companies to, to you know, to, to, to take a look at, to keep a, to keep an eye on, to see how they, uh, how they develop and how Mr. Burry's, um, how Mr. Burry's uh, analysis plays out for us. So, you know, <clears throat> To finish up, what, you know, what can we learn? Well, we've touched on a bit of it as we've gone through today, but you know, it's quite clear that you know Michael overcame his limitations to to, to prosper. Okay, remember, you know, he lost his eye when he was a very young child. Uh, his, you know, he's although he's you know he's married with a child, and I think he his son has Asperger's, and and he believes he may have an element of Asperger's himself, having done the the, the research. But you know what we, you know, he overcame his limitations. Okay, you know, and we're all going to have to do that. All right, you all have to do that. Okay. Um, his background was not in finance, okay, he didn't work, you know, he, he didn't work in a, a financial institution, all right, you know, investing was his hobby, investing was of which he turned into his business and he turned into a very, very successful business, as you can hopefully see, you know, he's had a simple plan, which is about value investing, and, and he stuck to it, okay, he hasn't, he hasn't been chasing the, um, chasing the kind of, let's say, the, the, the sort of the, the market fads, the market, you know, the market fashions, you know, he had a simple plan, and he has stuck to it. He's also prepared to go against the grain, okay? He's prepared to sort of, you know, to, to, to not follow the crowd and actually to, to go hunting in dark corners for, for the sort of the gems, okay, in terms of stocks that actually will, you know, provide him that, that value investing, that kind of that, um, that margin of safety. And, 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 you know, one of the key things is that we can all take about whether you're a trader or investor is that his success has come from his own research, right? You know, he's, he's, not, he's not buying signal services, okay? He's not buying tips, okay, off people. He's not, he's not uh, you know, taking tips off social media, okay? His success has come from his own research, okay, from doing his own research. And that is something we can all learn from, all right? That's something we can all take on board. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, you know, Michael Burry has been quite a fantastic investor. He's had a fantastic career for the last 25 years or so. Okay, you know he's overcome physical handicaps to to the rise to the top of the investing field. Okay, you know they were not they have not limited in his way. You know he's never worked for a major financial institution. All right, you know he, he basically did it all himself, and he's a value investor influenced by the work of Benjamin Graham. Um, he became a legend betting against the US subprime market in the early 2000s. So go away and read and watch you know, the, the movie, The Big Short, that will just uh, um, rejig your memory about that. Um, he's been long game stuff, okay? So I'd say watch this space, let's see how that plays out, okay? You know, would you bet against him? He's also, he's short Tesla, he's effectively short Elon Musk once again. You'd be saying, watch this space, you know, we'd be fascinated to see, you know, which, you know, how that plays out, okay? That would be, uh, that will make for an interesting narrative for the rest of the year, I believe. So um, don't forget to, to join us next time, ladies and gentlemen, all right? Okay, so join us on uh, Friday to uh, join my colleague Jens to understand how to profitably day trade Forex, including the introduction to breakout trading, how to break up setups, look in the real world, uh, and his Asian breakout FX trading setup. That's Friday, 11th of June, 2 p.m. London time. Check your inbox for the, uh, the, the webinar link. 
Um, so there you go, uh, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to contact us, you can do okay. Email global at admiralmarkets.com, youtube.com, okay, admirals global, uh, facebook.com forward slash admirals global, and instagram.com, admirals uh, global as well. So um, I hope you find that uh, useful. As you know, I appreciate we ran over just uh, a little bit there. I do apologize again. I'm always trying to share, okay, as much as I can with you. Um, you know, I, uh, I hope you found it useful. So uh, just uh, my uh, ever wonderful assistant, Anna there, okay, has just put up the poll results. All right, so uh, uh, who would you choose? Okay, who would you back in Michael Burry against Elon Musk? We've got 67% uh, uh, back to Mr. Burry uh, against 33% uh, back to Elon Musk. Controversial, hey there, controversial, but that's 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 all good. That's what we know, that's what we want. That's what we want. Um, as always, okay, uh, I wish you the very best of success in your own trading and investing endeavors. Um, be sure to join my colleague Jens, okay, on, uh, on Friday afternoon for his session, uh, and I look forward to speaking to you soon, okay? Trade well, everyone.